Today, let's look at an event scoring solution I built with Power Apps on Dataverse. And so with this one, it is for judging a event where people are gonna present some new apps to us. It's got the ability to configure the judges, the teams that are presenting, the criteria they're being scored against, then a way to collect the scores, and then finally a reporting screen so we know who won the event. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through this app, and then actually it's two apps, and we're going to talk about all the different things, right? There's some real simple functionality, like think gallery and form and some buttons to submit it, all the way up to a really complex system around the scoring with an editable grid that locks it out in different scenarios. And then finally, the master rollup result is very dynamic and it has some very complicated HTML. Uh, there's also some security challenges, Office 365 groups, lots of things to learn from this app. And you can even find out later how you can possibly download it. If that sounds like fun, then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here's my fancy event judging app. Now I noticed down here at the bottom, I've got five different buttons. That's because I'm in the admin role. If I was coming here as just a judge, I would only see the score button. So the first one here is setting up the judges. Now for this one, what we're going to do is we use a Azure AD security group. And so the idea here is that when I add someone to the group, like if we go here and look for Chewy and we choose Chewy the dog, and then we say add right here, then that is going to put him in that Azure AD group. So this is not showing us the Dataverse or SharePoint table. This is just showing us an Azure AD security group. And the idea then is that we're going to use that group to share the app with. So if you get added as a judge, you automatically have access to the app. So it's cutting down on the management side because with judges, I just need to know who they are. I don't need extra information. So judges are done that way. Over here on the criteria, so these are the questions, right? And so this is actually for the event we're running at Power Apps 911. I think we start judging today, actually. And so here you can see that we've got these different uh, questions. And so for each one, I just need to know kind of like a main, like, okay, so it's completeness. What are the number of total points that you can get for that? And then we've got the description. And but we have, you know, this is just using form control. So if I wanted to change all of this and be like, does it mention dogs? And then we say save, right? That's just submitting the form. It's going to the gallery. So this is a dataverse table. It could be a SharePoint table. It doesn't matter, right? But it's a dataverse table. And then up here, we're just summarizing the number of points. That way you know how many points total they're working towards, right? Okay, so that's the criteria. If we go over here to teams, we can kind of skip one here. I literally copied the criteria screen or duplicated the screen and then changed it instead of using the criteria list to use the teams list. And this is just where we're going to track the different teams, right? So we've got four or five different teams are competing. We're listing the team members. I left a spot for comments. I don't really think we'd have team comments, but who is the, uh, you know, whatever Power Ranger, Power Rappers, or whatever they call themselves, and who's on it. So that way when they win, we can announce them. Because, you know, at this point, I mean, the company's got 30 people. We're having to, you know, I know all the people, but remember who's on what team, I don't remember. So we're tracking that here. So then we get to the scoring. Now, this is where uh, the first round of complexity we'll talk about when I show you how the built app is built in just a few minutes. Here, what we do is, so this is showing you the different teams, right? So we just have a drop down. So we were like, hey, I want to score the dogs, right? The dogs are doing their presentation. So we choose the dogs, we hit start. Notice it locks out all this. And then here are those questions. And so what we're doing here is that we have, we're taking the, the criteria, we're turning it into a collection and we are supplementing it with the last time I scored these people, right? So you can see that I've given the dogs some points already. But we've kind of got all that pulled in. So this is a gallery showing a collection that I've made very dynamic, right? Like it's pulling things, a bunch of data in. So the user can just be like, you know, we're watching. I'm like, hey, creativity. Okay, so it's got a max point of 15. Oh, I didn't see that. Let's give them 20 points for creativity. If we click away, no, 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 right? You enter scores too high. The max points you can award is 15. So try again. And so now we go down here. Oh yeah, I meant to give them 15. Usability, it was a uh, 29. Looks great, right? I could update the uh, score here, USA update. I don't know, doesn't matter, right? But all of these things are being set and saved. Now, that's saving it to the collection though, right? I haven't submitted my score because maybe all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't really like the creativity there. They used forms. I don't like forms. Even though I use forms this app, it's okay. So we can just change that, right? We're still able to work with the data because this is updating collection. Now we're happy with it. Now we'll say submit. We got a little spinner here to stop us. And then a good job screen. Your scores have been saved and we can say, okay, and now we could choose to add points for the cats, right? So that's how scoring works, but I needed it to be as user-friendly as possible. So it actually took me a couple of tries. Nicola didn't like the first version of what I built. So I kind of rebuilt that. And so we'll learn how that works. But there's a lot of complexity on this screen. So we're gonna have to spend some time here. And then over here, finally, we've got the results screen. It's not the prettiest screen, um, but I wanted to use the out-of-the-box capabilities. So this is going to be a chart control, uh, Power Apps built-in chart control. And what's kind of fun here though, is so you see that dogs clearly won. Once again, I don't remember who all's on the dogs. So if I click here, 
I can see, oh yeah, dogs, right? So there's a member, so I'm pulling that information back so I can remember, oh yeah, Buddy and Chewy, so I don't forget to you know, tell uh, Buddy, you know, good job here. And then, because I know that Nicola, who's the only one that's gonna be able to see this screen when we do this for real, will wanna know how did Shane vote versus how did the other judges vote, right? Because that's the type of thing she do. Then she gets this look here. This right here, this is very complicated uh, HTML as well. And we're gonna go through that. It's got nested concats with nested concats inside of it, I think. Because, remember, the questions, the criteria is dynamic. So I needed these columns to be dynamic. I need the number of columns and what's scored. I, I mean, this had to be completely fluid, right? Like if we add a new criteria for, you know, best dressed, then that would just automatically show over here. There's nothing hard coded here. So there you go. That's the primary app. And like I said, this is what Nicole is going to see because she is the only admin of this contest. So she gets all five buttons. If uh, Chewy or myself, who are only judges, come in, then we would only see the score button. But I also realized that we might want a to do it on our phone. So I quickly, and I mean literally in 10 minutes, built the mobile app. I'm gonna show you, hang on, switch over to that. So look, this is the mobile version. I grabbed that same image, I threw it at the top, and then I copy and pasted the controls from the scoring screen here. All right, so this is that same whole dogs, look at the cats this time. We say start, it locks everything out, and I just rearrange it. Now you're thinking, Shane, why don't you just make that other app responsive? Because it would have taken me hours to make that other app responsive and work well in all the different scenarios, right? Let's just be honest, it would have taken a long time. This one, I literally built this in less than 10 minutes because I copied all the pieces from the other app, threw it in here, and published. Like, that's it. it. It does all the same exact things. You can see it's pulling in all the same information. Um, you know, maybe I should have pushed it off the border there. I, I probably should have spent more time on it, but I was just wanting to show you this because this is important when we see this a lot, right? Is that someone's like, hey, I just need this one specific portion of this to be mobile. Why make the whole app mobile? Just go make a mobile app that does the one thing. You could make it look nicer. You could have spent more time in the five minutes, seven minutes, whatever I spent on this. But at the end of the day, this is going to get me what I work, want, right? Like, so while I'm sitting there judging people, I'm going to open this mobile app and I'm just going to click in these different spots and fill in their scores and be like, yay, we did it. So there you go. So that's how the app works. Now, if you're thinking, Shane, I just want the app right now. Great. Just go over to training.powerapps91.com, go to our YouTube library, and there you can sign up and then you can download this working app, right? It's a nice little solution package that you have access to everything, right? If we switch here, here you can see like my solution, right? So I've got all the different tables in there. I got the security roles in there. I've got the both apps. All of that is available for download. Let's start talking about how this thing works. So here we are back in Make. Now on the home screen, it's probably about as simple as you think. Um, you know, we've got a label down here for what version we're on. We got one container with all the buttons and then the different buttons. So if you look at the judges button, if we look at it's visible, you can see that it's only if NF admin, right? So NF for me always means name formula. So that tells me if I go up here to app and look at the formulas, you can see that there is a one called NF admin and it says, Hey, if NF group ID, right? And we're going to talk about what that is in just a second, but that's the, that Azure AD group. So if they are a owner of that particular group, or if they are me, because I'm not an owner of that group, but I want to hard code myself in here, then do true or false. Uh, and so what this will do is when the app loads, it figures out, are they an admin? And so in this case, only Nicola or me, it, this loads is true. And so then the judges, the criteria, the teams, and the result button, they all only show up if this is true. Everyone else is false so they would only see score. That's the first piece of that. So if we go to the judges, so hold on the alt key and press that. Boop. Over here, this screen is as simple as you think it is, right? This is a gallery showing me the list group members for the var group ID. I had to do something, right? So there's several workarounds in here that are very common, so I want you to see this. So if you go back over here and you notice that when I specified what Azure AD group to use, it's this ID, right? And it's an NF group ID. Right, and I want to use it as this because it's not going to change throughout the use of the app. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to make that a name formula. But if you look at this gallery, it is using the groups connector to list var group ID. So what is var group ID? Var group ID is that same number, but it's in its own variable. Why? Why do I have the same thing in two places? Well, if you go back here to welcome, you'll see that when we clicked on on selected judges, we're setting that variable. The reason for that is that when you add someone, right? So you see the add here, or when you update the group, Power Apps doesn't know how to do it. And there's no way to say refresh the group membership. So what I needed to do was I needed to take that variable and blank it out, which would make the gallery go blank and then set the variable back to the parent, right? The NF group ID, the, the master, which will then cause us to reload the new members. So without this little hack in here, this doesn't refresh, right? But it's the only 
only way to get force this gallery to refresh because I'm just showing the group members and it's just not going to check again unless you change this variable. Speaking of all this weird functionality here, there is a separate video up there where I talk about how to do this. So I will point that to you if you want to go learn more about how this all works. But here you can see my drop down. All we're doing is filtering our Office 365 users to all the ones with the Power Apps 911 and the email address. We almost all have external users in our Azure ADs these days. So you wanna filter those out of pickers like this. So I just always say, hey, only do where at Power Apps 911 is in the mail address. And then that way it only shows literally the people that are Power Apps 911 people. When you add, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say set bar show spinner to true. So that's gonna do the loading screen if it takes a while. Then for every user that was selected, because they, this is a combo box, they could have selected both Aubrey and Allison. And so when it does that, right, for all the selected items, so for both Aubrey and Allison, add the member to the group, NF group ID, right? That's our group that we did. And then user principal name, that's the name. So it'd add Aubrey and then add Allison. So once it added both of them in, then it would do the whole thing to reset this. So that would put them over, uh, show up over here. And then we would do a reset. So I would set this back to blank and then turn off the spinner. That's how adding people works in this particular solution. You can say that it's not the most elegant thing, but I can tell you that that's the most efficient way to do this particular thing. Up at the top, we have a header. I just did that as a component, right? My component basically has an image of buddy, a label, which is showing screen name, and then a back icon. So that gave me that consistency across the screens. And once again, the whole goal was to try to build this, you know, as efficiently as possible. And so by using the headers and all the screens, that seemed to work pretty well. So that's the welcome and judges. We'll hit the alt key boop back here. So for criteria, criteria in, uh, you know, is a super simple screen, but this one is your traditional screen, right? This is a gallery showing the Dataverse table called criteria over there. Like if we go look real quick in my solutions, like we can go see the criteria table and then we'll go to columns. So you can see here, I've got the uh, description column. I called it for some weird reason, um, questions. I renamed the uh, name column to question. So I should have probably called it main criteria or criteria. I don't know, whatever, right? But I called it the question. And then down here, we've got the total points, right? Cause that's all I really care about here. And you can tell that's all I really care about because if you look here, I got question, total points, and description, right? So those are the three pieces of information that we're pulling in. This is just a form, right? It's a form hooked up to criteria. Its item property is gal criteria dot selected. I know, super shocking. And then, you know, if we go to edit this, right, we're just changing the button to save. We got save and cancel. And then here we got edit new so we can add and remove criteria as we see. Nothing, literally nothing to this. Oh, one more piece up there. Um, I want to know how many points they had total. So I'm summing gal criteria's all items, total points. And so that's how it's figuring out that 30 plus 10 plus 15 plus 15 plus 30 equals 100. This screen was so good that I then duplicated it and said, all right, I'm gonna make that the team screen, right? So the only difference here is that this is using a table called teams competing and it's got, you know, teams name, team member comment, right? But if we look over our solution, we would see that under tables, right? There's teams competing and same type of thing. If we go to columns, right? The only columns I added are the ones you just saw over there. Um, same edit new. And like you can tell I did that because look, the uh, whole delete, oh, I didn't show you there was a delete button over here, right? But if you do a delete, if you try to go delete the dogs, right? You get a little pop up. Yay, no, go back. But so both screens had that, but you can see that everything's underscore one because I literally duplicated the other uh, the other screen to get this one. Scoring, this one's much more complicated. So on the scoring side, you know, we gotta kind of look at this at different pieces, right? So first let's go back over here to score. So here you can see that when I click on this, it does a clear cold score. So that way if there's anything saved in there, you got to got through their funky way, it's always gonna clear out that collection and it navigates us over scoring. Boop, this drop down is just teams competing set to show the team name, right? So nothing fancy there. Start button, what it's going to do is on select, it is going to do the shenanigans. So lots of shenanigans, okay? So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to create a collection called Cole Scores. It is going to, let's kind of look, work inside out. So first I'm going to do show columns. So for criteria, you know what Dataverse, right? Like you get like 400 different columns. I don't want all those. I just need question description, total points and criteria, right? Remember the column name the same as a table is usually the primary key. So that's the, the ID key. So only pull those in, right? Keep my collection as small as possible. Great. Then we're going to add columns. And what we're going to do is we're going to add first a team ID and we're going to set that team ID to be drop down team. That's the team that we just selected. So we selected dogs, teams competing is the primary key for that. So that way I know 
what team this scores for. Okay, we got to put all this back together later. Warded points is going to be set to zero because we want to create a column that is a number of columns. So we can you know, say where they got one point or 30 points, right? My comments are going to be a text column set to blank. So we, if we want to leave any comments and then I have a score ID and that is going to be a GUID column. Right, and we'll see why that is in just a second. Okay, so we add those. Okay, so we've created this collection that is shaped this way. And if we kind of looked at that now, right, if we highlight that, let's pull this back up for a second, we can see. Oh, I haven't pressed the button before. Let's press the button. Boop. Right, so there's awarded points, comments, boom, 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 boom. But Shane, how is this stuff? Right, awarded points is 22, and you have comments. Okay, so that's the next part of this. So what we look now is once we've grabbed the blank collection. What if I've previously scored the dogs, right? Because you see, I've, I've scored the dogs before, so I've got information in there. I'm gonna say I wanna do a for all criteria. So for every question that there is, and I'm gonna do that as data. Anytime I do a for all, I always do it as data. It's gonna make referencing the variable or the object in a minute better. And the first thing I'm gonna do inside the for all is I'm gonna do a with, because I wanted to look up, all right? So let's do this look up from scores where the created by is the current user. So in this case, me, right? So find in scores where I I created it and it is for the question that we're currently processing data dot criteria and it's for the team that we just chose right so find me the record that Shane created for question one for the dogs right that's what it's going to do so store that record that row of information into score data because now what I need to do is patch collection scores right that's the collection we just made and I want to patch what I want to patch the record that we're currently on, right? So for criteria one, I want to patch criteria one. So I'm going to find that record. I'm going to set the awarded points to whatever I scored it last time. Uh, comments where I did last time and the score ID to the uh, score from the last time, right? So that's how I'm marrying the data up. If this width had been blank, no big deal, right? This patch would have just patched a bunch of blanks, nothing's there. If I was being really efficient, I probably could have done an if here and said, hey, if X score data is blank, don't even bother doing this patch. But, you know, I did not add all the efficiencies and I'm really I'm patching a local collection. So it's 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 instantaneous. So an if here would have been ideal, but, you know, whatever, it's fine. Then I marked where I closed my patch, closed my width and closed my for all just so I didn't lose my sanity when I got this giant nested hot mess. And then I finally I set a variable called var scoring to true. All of that just to make this. Now you notice these two disabled. If you look at that button um, and you say display mode, you can see if var scoring, which is a variable we just set to true, is true, then disable this, right? And this, these two are both disabled right now. Okay, I don't want them changing it from dogs to cats midway and then messing up our submit over here in a second. So this gallery is showing Cole scores, right? And then this is just, you know, uh, the question and total points. This is just a description, right? So that's how it's showing that. This is showing this item, my comments, because I have a comment previously, the C, I don't know, very creative, is already there, we're good. What happens here though, if I say play and change this to car, how does that get updated? So what's happening is with this text input, we've got an on change. And what we on change, we're patching Cole's scores, right? This collection, this item, this row, and setting my comments to the text from here. So that's how this collection is getting updated, right? So changing here doesn't change the data source, it's just changing the collection. The same thing for awarded points, right? You can see that on change for that one, we're saying, hey, if value self.text, so if they try to give it more than this 31 here, right, total points, so if they gave me a 31, if that is too high, then update context var show warning true, that causes a pop-up to show up, set the message to you entered a score of, you know, 31, and that is too high, the max points you can work for this category is 30. So I'm making the message in the pop-up screen very dynamic by passing it a, a message on the fly. But if you didn't, if you awarded them 22 points like I did here, then it would just patch Cole score this item, awarded points, value, self.text. Right? Remember the value is turning the text 22 into the number 22. And obviously its default is this item awarded points. So that's automatically here, right? All five of these are here because we have five criteria. But if we go down here and like we saw before, right? So if I change this to 31, it's gonna yell at me. All right, you entered a score of 29, that is too high, the max point you can work for this category is 30, try again. And then we'll just set this, you know, to 25, right? We'll lower it, there you go. So then now over here on the right, I can see my total score. This is a label that is only visible when var scoring is true. And its text is total score and then 
uh, Char 13 makes it on the second line. Some gal scores all item awarded points. That's how you can see that these numbers over here add up to 74. And you know, and we right if we change this from 22 to 24, right, then that should go to 76, right? So change that. Click out, 76, okay? So that makes you feel good. You see that changing this affects that. The submit, this one's not terrible, but we're going to say update uh, context var show waiting to true. That's gonna make this little spinner that you might've seen earlier go right here. I probably should have made that a more elaborate spinner, but at the last second, I remembered that I needed to block that out. So I made it a cheapy, it's fine. Uh, you can make yours nicer. But so I said for all the collections and score, right, as data, then what are we going to do? We're going to patch scores. That's our dataverse table. And we're going to do this. We're going to say coalesce lookup score score data, right? So this is saying, hey, do a lookup and try to find the score record from earlier. So if I previously scored this item, then it would have a record. It would find a match. If it doesn't find a match, this returns blank, right? Remember, coalesce does the first non-blank value. So it would skip this lookup and it would do a default score. So that's how it would know to add a new score if there had never been a score before, but if there was a score, update the existing. Eh? Tricky. Then we're going to set the judge in the scores table to the ob uh, intra object ID, right? Your Azure Active Directory user ID. So we're gonna save that as a judge. The comments is gonna be data, my comments. The criteria, so this um, in our scores table, if we go look real quick, let's go find scores. Scores is right here. And so if we look at columns, right, criteria is a lookup. So it needs a whole record patched into it. So that's why here we are patching um, criteria with look up the uh, criteria that we're looking on, right? So in the case of like completeness or presentation or use of Microsoft technologies, right? It's finding the right one of those and putting that here. Points awarded is data awarded points. And then team is drop down team selected, right? That's why I didn't want that drop down to be changed. But this is what creates the record of the score for you know the first line item, right? So that would, in case, our case here, right, it would have said completeness, comment would have been car, awarded points would have been 24, uh, criteria is completeness, and the judge would have been my ID. So all of that is over in the, uh, the scores table, right? If we go back here to scores and do an edit, right? So there is, right, so now you know my Azure ID, right? But there's the dogs, the C, the boom, 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 right? It's also 22 because we haven't hit submit. We'll hit submit in a second and show you that it changes to 26 or 24. It doesn't matter. You know it works. Then we update var score into false, right? So that's going to hide all of this stuff and make the other one editable. It's going to clear cold scores. So by wiping out the collection, it'll wipe out all the data here. And then it's going to update context var show waiting to false, right? And so var show wait to false is going to get rid of this little spinner that's right here. Var show warning true is going to make the whole pop up appear. And this time the message will be your score has been saved. You may return to edit them at any time you return to the screen to choose to save theme, right? So let's just do it. Let's hit play. So watch carefully because the little spinner here will only happen for a second. We'll say submit. There's the spinner. And then there's the pop up. And then there is the message. So this is all being driven by the same pop-up called con warning over here. So what we're doing, right, the button submit just makes uh, that go away. So that's no big deal. I believe what I did there, though, is I think the text for that. So if var scoring, then it says try again. So if they're in scoring mode and they got this message, it's because it was bad. So they need to try again. If var scoring is false, then it's OK because it's just saying you're OK, right? This image does the same thing. If var scoring, show this image. If not, show this image. That's why you saw the lady with the no, 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 or the try again stick. So using the same controls, I'm just making them dynamic based on the situation. Sometimes I do that type of stuff. Sometimes I don't. It, it takes a lot of juggling sometimes to do that. So sometimes it's easier just to make duplicates. But this day, I was, I was feeling a little better. So we're all done here. We can say OK. And so that's what scoring looks like. On the mobile app, scoring works exactly the same way. So we're not even going to go through that one. But that is how that would work. And then finally over here, that we go back, say back, boop. And if we go to results, so last screen, I know this has been a lot, but hopefully you're learning lots. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got a column chart. So I added this in. And what this is doing is this is showing the teams competing um, as data. And then what I'm doing is I need to get the total score. And so I am having to calculate this total score, right? So filter scores where teams competing equals data team competing. So for dogs, go get the dog scores, cats go get the cat scores, and then uh, put the points awarded. So that's how we're able to calculate these two on the fly. Other than that, right, you just pass it in and then boom, it's doing, I think I made some formatting changes, but it's just a column. I guess there's a video up there on charts if you've never used them before, but it's just a built-in chart. Now what we want to do is, 
in a chart, I'm holding down the Alt key. If I select one of these, so let's select the dogs. So this here is just a simple label, right? So team column chart one selected team name, dogs, char 13, new line, team members, and call chart selected team members, Buddy and Chewy, right? So I need to look that up. I already had that from column chart. So now I know this data, right? Who's in there? So I can say, congratulations, buddy. The last hard thing. You ready for this? Oh, I know the video is a little long at this point, but this is hopefully great stuff. So what this is, is I wanted to create us a dynamic chart of who scored what. If it's not blank, right? Because I don't want this to show up if it's not blank. What we're going to do is we're going to build HTML. So table style with the 100, border 1, pixel, blah, blah, blah. So that's what gives the table kind of its, um, you know, its shape. First row, we're using TH for table headers. And the first one's super simple, right? Border, 1 pixel, background color gray, right? I'm going to read all that all the time, but that's kind of the formatting stuff. And then judge, because word judge is always going to be the same. And then this is where we do the first hard thing. So let's kind of pull this concat into its own little piece here. Okay, so this concat, right? So... Go get the criteria, right? Those are the questions, right? We got five of those. So for each one of those, right, concat takes a table of data, those five rows, and turns each row into whatever pattern I put after it. So for each one of those, I said, hey, I need a TH style, blah, 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 blah. So that's what it looks like. And then the question. So this is why it says complete. Oh, I keep having to reformat this thing. Rah. Completeness, presentation, use of Microsoft technology, creativity, and usability. So all of that is being driven dynamically. So if you added a sixth question on, you know, best dressed, then it would just automatically show up here. That 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 that's pretty cool, right? So we're making the number of columns dynamic. Now what we're going to do here, right? And then we need one more th, and that is going to be for total, right? So total is hard coded. And then there's our TR, right? Our row is over, right? So that's the whole top row. So now we need to dynamically, for every judge, we need to make a row, right? We could have two judges, we could have 20 judges, we don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by filtering out the scores for the teams competing, right? So in this case, get all the scores for the dogs. Then I want to group them by the judge so then that way, all of Shane's scores are together, all of Chewy's scores are together, all of Nicole's scores are here, right? So we've made two or three different groups here. And then we're taking all the extra data and putting in an extra, right? So if you've never used group by, all right, I put another video up there, but group by is how you, um, you do that. So if we highlight this group by, we can see that produces a table. In this case, there was only two judges. I think it's me and Nicole. I forget, right? I think it's me and Nicole. There's the two judges. So there's two rows, right? One for each judge. This is the judge's... Azure ID, so this is how we can get their information back. And this is the table. This is the five uh, scores that they gave back. So we're going to do that as data. And then we're going to say, hey, if true, oh, I meant to delete that. Oh, that was for my testing. So this is then going to set the table row to be the white color. And then what we want to do, right? So for each person, right, we need a row. And then we need a, a TD, right? So that's the elements. So we're trying to do is completeness. And so, or we're going to doing the name first. So then we're doing Office 365 users, user profile V2, judge, right, my ID, and then get my display name. So that's how we're turning my ID into Shane. Close that TD element. Then we're doing a concat inside the concat. Rah! Yes, nested, 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 nested. What we're doing here is we're going to say, all right, so now we need to loop through extra, right? So we know there's five rows in there. So for every row and extra, we're going to do that as more because I was trying to be creative. And now we're going to say, all right, so for every row, so five uh, five rows of data, we're going to make one TD, right? We're going to set its style, and we're going to do more points awarded. And so then that's where it gets the 24, the 9, the 4, the 14, and 25. Boom, 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 boom. We're turning tables into columns using concat. I know, crazy. And then finally, we need the last one, and so that's going to be a TD style. There's the color, and we're going to sum extra, right? So look at all five of those rows, add up the points awarded. That's the total. And so that's where we get the 76 points that Shane awarded to the dogs. Once all that's done, right, we'll repeat that concat once for each judge. And then we go back to this concat. Whew, so much fun. And finally, when it's all said and done, we close out the table. Nested concats are crazy town, but they are very important skills if you want to do something like this. Um, I put a refresh button down here if you want it. I usually don't like the refresh function, but the reason I needed a refresh here was I wanted the ability, like if Nicole had the screen up and then, you know, I say, hey, I just updated my score. She just hit this button instead of closing the app and opening it, and then she would get the latest score. So in this case, a refresh made sense to add to her app. All right, last thing I want to show you, it was the very first screen. So up here we have the document documentation screen. So this is the screen that if you download this app from the training.powerapps911.com, 
this tells you what all the steps you need to do, right? Because it's not just as simple. You got to import the solution, then you got to go create the security group, then you got to, you know, add uh, share the app with your security group. You got to give the security group the access to the role, right? There's a bunch of things you need to do. But I thought this was a neat way to do this, right? So I have this giant documentation screen that just walks you through all the things you need to do. First of all, I've tried this. So I'm hopeful this will work. But in theory, you import the solution, you follow the steps on the screen, and you're up and running. You might notice documentation at the top so people don't miss it, but my app opens the welcome, and that's because if you go here to app and we go to start screen, it is set to be welcome. So even though I wanted documentation at the top so people had the best chance of seeing it, I didn't have to you know, do any other shenanigans there. Whew. I don't know what you guys, but I'm exhausted. That was a lot, right? But there you go. There is an app, like we're literally using this at the Power Apps 911 onsite. We're bringing everybody from all across the country into Cincinnati this week. Um, so we're going to use this to judge the uh, the apps that they built as teams. Uh, hopefully put some of those into use for us. So I built this and I wanted to show it to you. So there you go. Questions, comments. Do, do you like this style? Did you even make it all the way to the end? I realize this video got long, but there's just so many details. Like I spent a whole day and a half building this app, so it's not not shocking that it took me a little bit to uh, explain it all to you. All right, and remember, if we can help you with anything, right? I got this team of 30 people sitting around me right now. They would love to help you, whether it's with training, with consulting, uh, just ver uh, mentoring, right? So just getting on, helping you fix an app. We've got services everywhere from 30 minutes of help to 30 years of help. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.